Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Ah! Hey, hey, here we are, folks. What a, what a week. What a time to be alive. Uh, what a time to be depressed. It is a uh, Thunderdome out there. Yeah, things are, things are kooky. No question about it. Yeah, I, I got back from Houston. They shut down the flights the next day. I had to cancel my Greenville gigs. I'm supposed to be in Greenville right now. Oh yeah, but you can't come back. They don't. They you come back and they stick you in a cage with some kids. Yes, they put you in a coffin. They hammer it shut and uh, throw you out into the river. But I, I'm 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 bummed. I hate canceling, but I think I think it's bad. If I if I cancel, it's bad. Yeah, I just canceled Sign Splitters officially because oh. well, they got this quarantine. I don't want to. I don't want to do a gig and then have to stay in my house for two weeks sure and, sure and if those are the rules i want to i want to live by the rules i don't want to be the fucking asshole who's like ah fuck you it doesn't apply to me you know i don't want to be a super douche right so uh had to move it to march it's getting moved to march but i have to say this part of me and i'll catch flack but it doesn't matter now because I'm, I'm off of twitter which is the best i took twitter off my phone which is the best move i've ever done in my life wow congratulations fatty that is not easy well, I've gone on via the internet, just the Internet Explorer or whatever the fuck, just to Twitter.com, just to fire off a tweet, and then I don't check anything about it. That's the move. It's not easy, but um, that's the move. But So I'm going to get shit for this, but I have to say right now, I, my ego, I got some pride in this New York is back, we're in phase two, I'm eating at a restaurant, I got my hair cut. And Texas and Florida and these red states that were like, oh, you got a mask. <laughs> they're right. all exploding with cases. They're yep. shooting up and they're trying to do well. It's because we started testing. Fuck you. This shit works. Every scientist is saying it. And our cases in New York have, have plummeted. And the reason we had them was because we're an international city with fucking subways. And the reason yep. you got them is because you're just ignoring science and doctors and your bunch of chooches and you're going to all the shit and uh, fuck your mother's in the ass because we're yep. back, baby. Woo and I got to say, NYC, it looks like uh, Florence out there. Every every table is full. There's stringing lights. There's a, a big fish coming out on a tray and the waiter's got the white white uh, lab coat going i mean it's beautiful in the village oh i'm loving it i mean we went to a restaurant the other day and sat and the lady came out and i mean i was jerking off under the table She's yes. like, what do you have and i'm like i i got my finger up my ass that's what i have <laughs> that's the special of the day <laughs> anal du jour but uh i, I was in a story yesterday i went to help salicuse do some moving and we you didn't went, hit me up. You come to well, the neighborhood, you don't say hello. Well, he was in a time crunch. It was uh, we dropped off a couch, we got a bite, and we we hightailed it out of there. Oh boy, this is this is painful. Well, I mean, I'm in the village. We drove right to your home. <laughs> I showed well, up at your house. It wasn't like that. It, I, he drove. It was his dad's car. His dad's gay. It, it was a quick thing. We had a we had a, a falafel and bolted. All right. Well, I wouldn't but, have mentioned it. It could have just. So, uh, hey, you never it was know. A risk. I knew it was a risk mentioning it. But here's the thing. I Big fucked risk. up because I got you half a box of Antoine's over here, the best cookies on the planet, and some queef fan of ours, he, uh, he messaged me. I'm not going to give my address, but he sent us a, a poster. He wants us both to sign it, and he gave us some clams. Oh, I'll take some clams. I love a clam. I like so My I wife's clam was on my chin earlier. Yeah, I can smell it through the screen, but... <laughs> Uh, I sh yeah, I should have popped over, but Salak, we dropped off a, like a TV stand and then hightailed it because he had a Honda Element and it was barely running. It's a whole thing. But, um, yeah, I would have loved to have seen you and gotten you to sign that, given you the dough and gotten you a cookie. The cookie dough. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> well, Antoine, uh, he sent me a big old batch, and I got to say, oh, we okay. talked the other day, we did a queef, 
And you were like, how about these Antoine's cookies? You're texting me. And once again, I'm like, this Antoine, I'm, I'm going to have to fly out to Sunnyvale and stick a boot in his ass. A but, good but boot. I, evidently, uh, no, a bad boot. What bad but boot? I, got a, <laughs> I didn't have any cookies. Oh, I'm like, okay. I'm like, Mark's getting all these cookies. I got no cookies. But then, as sure as night follows day, most things I worry about never happen anyway. The doorbell rings, and there's and a I'm pleasant gay. little you know, Vietnamese kid handing me a box of cookies. Sure. Individually wrapped, soft, squishy, crunchy, all kinds of adjectives. And, uh, Charlie. Stuck a, yeah, stuck a few of those in my ass, and uh, it was nice. And uh, Brendan Sagalow came over yesterday. I, I, I bought a new... We got the stimulus package, ah. which is delightful. Did you get a stimulus pack? I don't know. I don't think so. I got, a, got a, I, I got a small package. No stimulus. Well, we got a debit card in the mail with a big American ah. flag on it, and it said, you know, congrats from Donald Trump. Hope to get your vote or whatever. And, um, you know, I threw that in the trash, but I got a debit card, and I'm like a swinging dick out here. All right. I'm one of these guys now. I got my regular bullshit debit card. Then we got the corporate card, and now I got the uh, the 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 what's it called again? Stimulus. Stimulus. I'm one of these guys. Which card? I got like I got like a oh a three card stud over here. I know you fan them out. You got a diners club, a uh, uh, Whole Food. I've been there. Yeah, it's exciting. So I bought a new smooth, a ninja. When I did the oh, Louis tour in 2016, every green room had a big ninja. Yes. And you stick all your veggies and your dildos in there and your cookie dough. Yes. And that was the first purchase I made when I started making some money was a ninja. Yeah, love a ninja. That's, is it still ninety nine ninety nine? What's that mean? Not at the price. Oh, no, it came down a little bit. This ah, was, uh, I brought so a brand new one, 89 something. Okay, look at that. COVID but, prices. So uh, I bought one. That was 2016, mid-2016, and I use it every single day. So it's starting to get a little gunk and some fog on there. And I yeah. wash it, but it still had a, a couple chunks in there. And I noticed the blades were a little little dull. Mmm, it's inevitable. So I call up uh, big old Sagalo, and I said, hey, you need some healthy foods in your asshole. And I said, you want to take this off your hands? And then he admitted later he had to text Mike Cannon and be like, what do you think of the uh, Ninja Commando 8? And Cannon's like, you need that. Take that. Wow. So he came by. I gave him that. Got the new one here. It's very exciting. So I'm sure he'll never use it, but it felt good to pass it on. Yeah, he'll put a s'more in there and a peanut butter (laughs) cup and a scoop of uh, mint chocolate chip. But... uh, those things are great, but they do they do wear out. But here's the clinker with those things. They're a bitch to clean, and you got to keep buying the fruit and the veggie and the anal and then the uh, and the jizz, and it's, it's a whole thing. I sound like Cosby there. But you got to keep buying everything, and then your fridge is full of that, and then you got the ninja, and you're like, fuck it, I'm buying a smoothie. I don't want to deal with this. Well, the other thing is, too, you run out of the things at different times. Yes, yes. Like, I like a. This is my my smoothie is an almond milk, a spinach, a banana, a blueberry. Okay, it's that's good mix. My, that's my mix. But all of a sudden, you get you tub of spinach, and I jam a ton of spinach in there. I, I take oh, big yeah. green shits, as you know. You're like Popeye. But sometimes I get the green business in there, a nice banana, no blueberries, and mm. sometimes there's no banana. And banana is the most crucial. It gives it the creamy creaminess. It's, it's like the backbone. Semen. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> yes. And uh, so anyways, I got a new one of those. I got a new tea kettle, too. It's one that you, you set the temperature. Because green tea is supposed to be 175, so you can pick the temp. Right. And you should wow. see the spout on this thing. It's sexy. It's a long, curvy spout. Ooh, I'm a, I'm a spout size queen, so I like that. Uh, what how, Do I get one of these? How do I get a, a package? I have no idea. It just showed up. I think the Altmans are uh, therapists. Uh, what are the fuck? Financial. What do you call them? CPA. Yeah, what's it called? Though? Accountant. Accountant. Yes. Yes. Our accountant. Dracula. Uh, he did something. I don't know. It said it was addressed. His name was on the little letterhead oh. or something. So he figured it out. You should be getting one of these. It might have been a direct deposit. Ah, the old DD. Designated but, driver. You know me. I like to. Uh, I like to play the game. If it's a stimulus package, I'll stimulate. Bring it on, fatty. I'll take it. Yeah, stimulate on my face. I'm with you. So I, I'm stimulating. I bought a. Uh, we bought a desk and a tea kettle and a smoothie maker and a, a prostitute and a Russian bride. 
No, uh, in honor of Trump. So it's exciting. Yeah, boy, you can spend money. That's a quality you have. Well, I like to. Well, especially if it's free money. I mean, well, forget sure. about it. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying, like, you ever seen Brewster's Millions? We, we could do list millions and you would be cleaning up. But I'm also careful. I got a nice little nugget. I'm not, I'm not in, I'm no, I'm no Louie. Aha. Uh-huh. Like, no, Louie would go buy a tuba and it'd be out of money. I mean, like, he's <laughs> just like, you got to spend all your money. He's one of those nuts. Right. Money's not real. It's all liquid, baby. You're like, ah, shut up. I, I, I'm, I'm in debt. Exactly. Money's like air and you're like, okay, sure. Right, um, right. So I save some, I spend some, but you got to live your life. You got to have fun. But I am trying to have less things. Raha. Uh-huh. Here, here. I'll tell you what, these, the podcasting, there's too many wires. I know, I know. It's brutal. I'm plugged into the wall. Then I got the mic wire. Then I got uh, the computer plugged in. My asshole's plugged into the, the generator. It, it's all over the place. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff. So, anyways, it's been nice. I bumped into Veter yesterday. I've Ooh. seen Veter a couple times, and uh, it's nice to see people. Got a haircut, and you know, yeah, I'm with you on the uh, on the things because we're we're moving out. Me and the lady are moving to a, you know, we're moving uptown, baby. Next stop, Pottersville, and <laughs> you don't realize how many trinkets and nuggets and twinks and kooks you got around here you got little vials of this and a little little pamphlet of that and a, and a mind comps over here and then i got a you know a, a dildo here it's like all these little things you accumulate over years at chapsticks and double a batteries and a swastika it's just crazy and you're like what am i doing here why do i have all this and i can't throw it away it's this weird catch 98 where i'm like i don't need this but i'm like well, i can't just throw this in the garbage it's a d-cell battery that's what's nice about something that still works, and that's what's nice about young, poor, chubby comics. Is you go, hey, do you need a record player? <laughs> do you need a remote? But you, you buy. Th- it's so fascinating the buying things, and then a year later, you're like, I don't want this. Right, right. Like I, I, as you know, I bought a PS4. I got a wild hair inside of my asshole, and because sure. we were playing Nintendo and loving it, but I didn't realize. The pleasure of the Nintendo was the memory of ah, playing Nintendo. Nostalgia. So, so then I bought a PS4. It's got 78 buttons. I have haven't played a video game in two full years. We use it as a DVD player. Aha. Uh-huh. And even then, it's mostly streaming anyway. So I barely use the thing. I got two remotes. And every once in a while, I'll take a photo of my tv screen saying oh this movie and people are like hey the ps4 i knew you were a nerd and i'm like no i've never played the thing ever in my life i don't know anything about video games right right it's so true Uh, can i just say that i'm a little annoyed at uh at old saggy titsalo because he he questioned you on the on the the ninja take the fucking ninja it's the best thing you own what are you kidding you had an abortion three weeks ago take the blender well he's from long island he wears shirts with no sleeves he doesn't True. know what a ninja blender is well he knows what a ninja is and i if i know a guy from the burbs they love ninjas they all have a sword and a case and a throwing star up their ass take the fucking blender well i'm sure it's just straighten out a crooked table at his house now I mean, he's not using that <laughs> thing but uh, he'll use the blades to cut himself he's emo but right, right. emo but, phillips hopefully uh great comic favorite city's dayton Side note. <laughs> wow, I, I knew he was weird, but Jesus. Very strange. But anyways, uh, yeah, no. we got all kinds of things. But it is amazing. I've even had this where you go through the drawers, and every once in a while you donate clothes, which feels good. Yes. And I've done it where you go through, you take inventory, you're like, I don't need this. I've never worn that. Fuck that. And then three months later, you do it again, and you're like, I don't need this. I thought three months ago I want that. And then you realize, it's like that um, Todd Barry joke. I think it's an actual method of something, some kind of lady, that minimalist lady. Uh Uh-huh. It's like you put a shirt in, inside out in the drawer or something. You put it upside down or you... Marie Kondo. Yeah, yeah. So if you find it and it hasn't been touched, you you don't need it. Right. Something like that. If you leave it in there for six months, you haven't used it, you go, I don't need this. Wow, geez. I guess I don't need my kid. Never been touched. But, uh, yeah, I, I feel like that, I mean, not a joke, but, like, kids are scary because you have a kid, then a week in, you go, it's crying a lot, it's shitting itself, it's got a tiny dick. I don't want this thing. Yeah, there's a lot of things like that. That's what's amazing. It's an amazing thing about, like, this podcast or comedy, things that stay steady. Yes. Because 
How many times have you written three pages of a novel and been like, I'm an author, oh. baby. I got a oh, new yeah. book. I mean, in March, I, I was 48 pages into a biography. I sent it to my agent. My agent had it. My agent, Jimmy. What? Yeah. I'd love to read this 48-pager. And then it was a cold day when I shit in that stiletto. I mean, I mean, I had a book agent. I talk, did I tell you this? No, this is all news to me, Fatty. Lay it on me. Who, who are you, Chaucer? Oh, God. Well, I, I started writing my memoir because early on- what? You gotta have like, shit. You gotta have the thing happen. You gotta get molested or, or kill a kid. What are you having a memoir? What are you kidding? I mean, we have every week we do an hour podcast. <laughs> I guess you're right, but nobody wants to hear about us at the uh, the Rochester Zing House. Well, I mean, I I think I think you're wrong. All we right, got, we got sixty, eighty thousand listeners. I mean, half of them think I'm a cuck liberal fag, and they fast forward through me talking. But whatever, <laughs> <laughs> that other what half. And at least a quarter of them don't read also, so... That's true. That's true. Because two, Tuesdays don't read. Um, <laughs> Put in your books. <laughs> um, but any jizz. So I started writing the thing because it was winter, and I, it was the winter of my years. I lit a candle, and I was just writing down there. Sure. Fast and furious. And I sent it to, uh, you know, a certain somebody, another somebody, people that have written books. I'll just say that. Oh, boy. And they were like, this is good stuff. And they gave me notes and, and red lines. And I, I put in the necessary changes. What? And then I sent it to my manager and agent. And they put me in touch with a, a literary agent. woo And I talked to this literary agent. And she really gave me the goods she's like this sounds great and i pitched it and she was like this sounds amazing and yada yada and i really was like i'm gonna be a book i'm gonna i'm a book guy wow Uh, i'm gonna be jerry i'm gonna be an arthur so (laughs) you're the next uh brad garrett with that thing (laughs) 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 So, so i sent it finally i write all this stuff I send it off to the lady who is, couldn't have been nicer, and uh, she reads it, calls me back a couple of weeks later, and this is where it all comes apart. I mean, oh boy. you know us with our fragile uh, egos and whatever. Sure. She's like, I'm just going to start by saying this, and right there, I was like, Larry David, right when she said that, I was like, that's it. I'm, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. Uh, yeah, no need. S- say no more. All I needed was that, like, all right, I'll start by saying this, and I was like, I'm fucked. And she's like, you're an excellent writer. Just Ah. really good on the page and really interesting. That's nice. And then the next nine minutes was like a roast. (laughs) I mean, it was, was, you don't know what a vowel is. You got too many (laughs) commas. You don't know the difference between apostrophe. She's like, your stories are all over the place. Uh, She's like, this story led to that. She's like, I don't even know what you're doing with this. It's hard to tell what you're thinking. She's like, "It, it, it was like being stabbed in the tits with a, a pen knife right right it really well, got i pen, mean it got ugly pen is mightier than the sword but <laughs> it, it's tough because they know they they know they that's like in the in the the let you down easy handbook start with a compliment and then shit right in their mouth that's how you get them on board you I mean, gotta start to be, with the nice we had to be separated my manager was like i was like earl <laughs> weaver i mean my manager was holding me back and it was ugly, but um, you know how it. This is what's so great about comedy is with comedy, you write a joke, you go do the show, you say the joke. If they laugh, yeah. you tell it again. Yeah. If they don't laugh, you make some adjustments. But with a yep. book, you spend nine months working on the thing, and then you send it to somebody, and they're like, "Piece of shit." Right? Yeah. Fuck that. So, can I? What was the hook? I mean, what was the the twist? No, no, the, book. Book. Uh, well, what was the uh, what was the turn? What was the angle? What was the premise? Well, that was the issue. I didn't really ah. have that. It was just, but the thing was, I got, you know, stories from childhood. There's anxiety. There's therapy. There's alcoholism. There's herpes. There's stand-up comedy. There's heartbreak and recovery and all that oh, shit. Yeah, you got a lot. I mean, you you had a one-woman show for a while. I mean, you've got <laughs> you've got a, a narrative cooking. Yeah, that was essentially it. Was the one lady show, but uh, that was good. Didn't now, thanks. Well, didn't didn't work out. So I, I'm not a book guy. What are we What are we doing? And then I yeah. realized this is the book. Yes, the book Digital. is the is the podcast. Here, here, I'm with you. I'm I'm a ghostwriter. Yes. Um, 
Well, hey, it was a valiant effort. Uh, I'm impressed you even went down that road. You're like Hemingway over here. Just don't kill yourself. But it's good to have you back on the uh, the scumbag dirtball degenerate crew. But now we got no. Uh, there's no gigs. I mean, the gigs are dropping off like flies. So I, I, I don't know what's what here. It's tough out there for a, a chooch. Uh, we're trying to make it work. Canceling a gig killed me. I was going to meet up with Chris Al. We were going to do some black people stuff and talk and all that. And I don't know. It's all been re- rescheduled, but who knows when everything's going to catch on fire again and flame up and spike or peak or tweak. So, yeah, we're back to square jizz here. Well, maybe if some people would just, you know, take some precautions, hang out outside, wear a mask, and... Uh stay a few feet apart when they're intermingling with strangers. Yeah, well, the thing is, you're never going to queef on everybody, because, like, I got a buddy, he's all into the COVID stuff, he wears the mask, he, he yells at everybody, and yet he won't eat in the street, because he's like, well, now you got cars going by, now you're absorbing exhaust and food particles and pigeon jizz and, and fish cum and all this stuff, and he's like, that's gross, too. So you're like, oh, we're all so happy about that, but then he makes a decent point about the particles. Oh, I don't care about the particles and I don't the particles. Either. Well, but the the particles and the particles, that's just for your own benefit. I don't want to be near a car. The other shit is to protect the other people. Aha. Uh-huh. It's out it of is. consideration. Right, right. If I get sick, you know, I'll, I'll puke on my shoes and take a couple naps. But, you know, if my mother gets sick, forget it. My dad Ooh. will uh, never talk to me again. Yeah, and there is something going down with the uh, the porkers. I, I got to say, a friend of mine... <laughs> He's a he's a dear friend. He's a big beefcake. He's a he's a heavy set husky cunt, and he's got the COVID. Oh boy! Yeah, that that it, it it it's a chubby chaser. This COVID. Is he is he dying? Is he sick? Is he sneezing? Because some people, you know, they blow their nose twice and it's over. Yeah, no, he's uh he's he's a large cat, and he went to the hospital. He said it was hell on earth. He said the breathing was an issue, and it hurts to breathe, and the fever, and the body aches. And he said it was about four days of hell, and he's, he's finally coming out of it. Wow. Yeah, yeah I, great I, I guy. Don't know, I don't know what to think, because Robert Kelly, obviously a big guy, he's got the antibodies. He had yeah. the sniffles for a few days, Yeah, and uh, he seems to be fine. So I've heard the blood type thing. It has to do with your blood type or your uh-huh. semen type, and I, I don't know how to find out my blood type. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's tough. I don't either. I think you get tested for that, or you take an IQ test, or Blood Brothers, Blood Bath. I don't know. Be negative. Menstruation. Who knows? But I gotta, I gotta run a few things by. But should we, should we talk about uh, an ad, or is it too early? No, I don't think it's too early. I mean, there's never too early to talk about these folks. Well, I gotta throw out this one. I love this group. I think they're one of the best. I use them every night. Feels, everybody. F E A L S. Do you experience stress, have anxiety, chronic pain, or have trouble sleeping once a week? You're not alone, folks. Many of us do. I take this stuff, it comes in a little vial with a dropper, uh, just a drop or two right on the uh, old soup cooler, right on the tongue, will really just put you at ease. No high, no altered, just nice and easy. Japanesey, and you can doze off and uh, sleep soundly for once in your goddamn life. Uh, what is Feels? It's a premium CBD delivered directly to your doorstep. Feels naturally helps you reduce stress, anxiety, pain, and sleeplessness. That's what it does for me. A few drops under the tongue. Works within minutes. Uh, new to CBD, Feel, Feels offers a free CBD hotline and text message support to help guide you with your experience, and it works naturally to help you feel better. No high, no hangover, no addiction. Join the Feels community and get that delivered to your door every month. Save money. Tell them, JoJo. Yes, do it. Feels has me feeling my best every day, and it can help you too. Become a member today by going to feels.com slash Tuesdays, and you'll get 50% off your first order with free shipping. That's right. It's f e a l s dot com slash Tuesdays to become a member and get fifty percent off automatically, taken right off with your first order with free shipping. One more time, it's feels dot com slash Tuesdays and feel better. Nice. I gotta get some more of that. I haven't used it in a little while, and uh, I love it. So Same. I gotta get some more myself. Maybe they could hook it up like Antoine's. 
Yeah, send it over. I, I put a little feels on my chocolate chip and take the whole thing down. Uh, I like. That. I'm gonna have some of those chocolate chips as soon as we're done with this episode. Treat myself. And uh, by the way, this episode is also brought to you by Raycon. Woo! Now that everyone is cooped up at home, using earbuds has become an essential service. Oh, yeah. Drown out the sounds of those roommates, girlfriend, or fireworks, or what have you, with Raycon. Everyone needs a great pair of wireless earbuds. Cans. Raycons are awesome. They sent us some a while back, and uh, I use them. I run every day now. I've been running. Every- By the way, my times are plummeting. It feels great. I'm in tip-top oh, shape. Nice. Good to hear plummeting in a positive light for once. Yeah, it's it's great. Oh, I plummet, and uh, I stick my Raycons in there, and I listen to some uh, some news and get my news for the day. Usually about half the run, I'll listen to it. Then I pop them out. I mean, I pop off the uh, podcast or the news show. Doesn't matter. The point is, these Raycon earbuds, they stay perfectly put. The sound is killer. I love it. And I mean, I'm cooking. I'm running yes. some pretty fast miles out there. And those, oh, yeah. those Raycon earbuds stay right where I need them to be. You already know Raycon earbuds start at about half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds on the market, and they sound just as amazing as the other top audio brands you know. You've here, used here. Them. I love them. I like them. And they got a new model. The newest model is the Everyday E25 earbuds, and they're the best ones yet, folks. Six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth, deeper bass sound. So you can't go wrong. Now's the time to get the latest and the greatest from Raycon. Get 15% off your order at buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays. That's buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays for 15% off Raycon wireless earbuds. One more time. That's buy, B-U-Y, raycon.com slash Tuesdays. And we are grateful for the uh, sponsors, so please support the people that support the show. It helps us out. It helps you out. It helps them out. And, uh, you know, s- spread it around. Use that uh, stimulus package. Yeah, pack it right in my pooper. And, uh, all right, I got so many things to run by it. Maybe I should save some. Some are juicy, some are slimy, and some are squirters. Like, I'll take whatever you feel. Surprise me. All right, well, I'll go in chronological ore here. Uh, so did a gig in Houston, you know, a couple days ago, got back on Monday, flight was delayed three hours. What are you going to do? It's, uh, it's the dark ages. I'm not complaining, but finally landed in, in Newark, got your $8 million Uber back to my apartment. And I always have this fear about the hog. I don't know what it is. I, I don't own a lot of big items. You know, we live in New York. Nobody's got a car. Nobody's got a boat. Nobody's got a dog house. We got a, an iPhone uh, and a laptop and, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a dildo. So I get back into New York, and that drive, you go through the Holland Tunnel, you pull into the West Village, and I always go, the hog's going to be stolen. The hog's going to be towed. The hog's going to be pushed over. The hog's going to be breathed on wrong, scratched. It could get touched, you know, whatever. A pigeon could shit on it. Thank you. So... Pulling up, you turn on my street, and I go, here it comes. And I look out that window, and there it is, the hog in all its glory. Now, that sounds good, but I got a motorcycle cover on that bitch. It's gone. I can just see the hog in broad daylight. The sun is beaming off this poor guy. He's going to get cancer. Oh, he's unprotected. Yes. No condom, no mask, no diaphragm. And I'm like, who steals a a bike cover? I mean, someone, the, someone with a bike. I, I guess so, but I go up to it. I'm like, well, maybe it got uh, fondled or, or molested or something. The bike's in ship shape. I think somebody even cleaned it, but the cover's off. The cover's gone. I walked around the block. I, I did an APB, uh, boop, 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 calling all covers. Uh, we're missing a uh, gorilla. Nothing. Hmm. My favorite cover all along the watchtower. Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> yeah. Well, somebody jimmied me right in the pooper because this thing is is gone with the wind, and it's just vexing. You know, I already bought a new one. It's twenty bucks. Who gives a shit? But it's just who takes a cover? It's it's uh, it, your brain is going badonka dunk, and you just can't figure it out. So let me ask this: There's no, you can't tie the cover from the inside to the handlebars before you pull it over? No, that wouldn't make sense. So I there's guess no way to could. secure the cover. 
No, it's got a little clippy that you you put around it like a baby in a, in a stroller in a car kind of thing. But you can just unclip. I guess I could put a lock on the clip, but nobody does that. I mean, there's a zillion covers all over the island. I guess that's why they're so easy to steal. It's almost like they're basketball nets. Aha. People always steal a basketball net. That's true, yes. they're like, it's there, and I'll take it. I'll put it on my hoop. Exactly. How are you going to claim that net? They all look the same. Same with a cover. Exactly. You know what I should do is I should write, like, Black Lives Matter or uh, Out to Lunch or Queef, something big, bold, spray paint right on that cover so I know it's mine. Or maybe a MAGA, like the, like the Larry David. <laughs> no one will, uh, they might take a dump on it or something. Oh. But no one wants a MAGA cover. Good point, good point. Not yeah. in the village, anyway. Certainly, there's 43 million people that would like it. Right, right. Ah, damn. Well. But maybe something to personalize it or just, like, a big dick and balls or something. Yeah, I'm thinking queef it up or uh, that's lunch. Yeah, something. So even if somebody sees the cover in in the Bronx, they'll go, oh, I guess Norman lives here. Right. So has it has it turned up or anything? Nah, it's gone. It's uh, it's come out like a gay a guy in the 80s, and uh, it's out there, Jerry. It's gone. Yeah, you need the cover because you don't want, I mean, the summer, I guess, is the better time to have it be gone, but you don't right. want that faded. You ever yes! see the, like there's like a, we were just walking by like a, a store and all the window shit is fake, like a dollar store where it's just like tied and the tide yes. is like a light pink now. It looks so right. ghetto. It does. The sun really wears on you. Nobody thinks about it because it's just, it's just there every day and it's so gradual. But you leave a, a, a He-Man doll out in the sun for two weeks and leave a He-Man doll in a, in a temperature controlled closet and it's going gonna, it's gonna to show. It's oh, going to look, look like Skeletor at the end. He-Man lived his whole life in the closet. <laughs> those, those pants aren't fooling me. Ooh, that was a beauty. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's just one of those things. So last night, it's weird how when you have a, a, a setback, it makes you realize, like, well, i got to use this hog more. I, 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 you know, it could have gotten stolen, so it makes you, like, appreciate it more. And so sure. I put the lady on the back of that thing last night, and uh, she hung on to my bits and titties and we drove around tribeca hit the water and we had a couple of beers in us and it was it was no helmet it was beautiful that sounds that sounds pleasant I've it was seeing pleasant. the there's the blue the revels yes the blue revels which seems nice too but that helmet the shared helmet seems tough i, I don't want any of that city now, lice yeah speak of the revel I, i'm with you that's uh that's no good but i think it's better to get the city lice than crack that head like an egg yeah you don't want the head crack that's no good but it's cute with a gal on the back of your uh on the back of your hog because you can feel her cans on your back and she's like every time you swerve she's like oh my god ah!" you feel like uh, james dean for a second with you know minus the uh the car crash well it's one of the few chances to be the little spoon ah that's true. That's not, and that's the better spoon. Let's be honest. Oh yeah, no doubt about it. Just it's good she doesn't have a uh, you know spear to, to penetrate me with. No, I mean that might be fun too. Don't you think the worst <laughs> part of being pegged or pegging is afterwards when you have to go back to communicating? Yeah, no doubt about it. Like, I is mean, it dishwasher safe, or are you watching Ozark? What are you doing? I mean, like in the middle of it, sure, you got a hard on, she's got a wet on, or whatever they get, and it's just a nice pounding. But then afterwards, I mean, you got to figure out what to eat. I mean, that's yeah, insane. I know that's brutal. I mean, it's, conversation's tough enough already, but now with the pegging, it's it's doubly awkward. Yeah, same with threesome, wife swap, all that stuff is just that that post. If you you need the Men in Black fucking neuralizer. Yes, you need a neuralizer. Because if I had a neuralizer, I'd be getting pegged every morning. Right, but you'd be like, why is my uh, poo falling directly out of my anus? Well, I don't. No, I neuralize her. Oh, I'll remember. I don't mind remembering. I'm like, yeah, I know what's up. You got to neuralize her. Then the conversation go back to normal. You uh-huh. can still be limping and crying. But yeah, the, the tough part about pegging, too, is you have a boner. So your boner is just going out into nothing, negative space. So it almost looks like the peg is coming out of you. Does that make sense? Mm, a little bit. I mean, the peg is c- going in and out. Like it looks like you're shitting the peg. 
Well, it looks like the peg is going so far in because it's just so odd, the guy getting railed having a boner going into nothing. So you're just like, and now you got a boner shooting out into the wind and it's not going into anything. Well, there's two boners. There's fake boner going yes. in and regular boner staying put. Yeah, yeah, but it's just it's just put out into the world. It just feels so <laughs> unused to me. Yeah, I mean, I imagine she's put out too. She doesn't want to do all this <laughs> hip cranking. Ah, maybe they do. I don't know. There's penis envy. But I think I think he's wailing on his real boner. Oh, that makes sense. I think he's cranking it out, and as soon as he blows. The pegging has to end because I mean, after you come, there's no way you still want to get pegged. I assume not, but can't you have an anal, glandular, milk in the prostate, oral queef? Something's happening. What do you mean, like a, a an anal like, orgasm? Oh, because they sh- yes, they touch the spot, the G spot, and it makes you automatically come. Yeah, that's 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 an old wives' tale. Call in if you've uh, been there. Yeah, I'm not sure. The whole thing sounds. Very strange to me. Off-putting. You know what would be fun to do is uh, go to like a pegging s- site and read the reviews. Ooh, that's not bad. I bet we could find that. That might be something for Patreon. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, this one was good, but it didn't hit the prostate, or this one was not hard enough, or this one smells after. It's something. Well, there's probably places, too, where like the S&M or whatever, where you go to a place where a woman pegs you. Ah, that too. You could, they could, you could review. You could check out those reviews because I'm sure, sure, especially in New York, there's places you can go where they wear leather and they they bite your ear and they stick their heels in your ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, think I've played there before. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. All right. So that's one nugget. Let me give you another one. Sure. Now, you're a thinker. You're a, a thoughtful guy. Let this swirl around in your noggin for a second, because I can't crack the code on this puppy. And maybe if I give you all the pieces, you can get the jigsaw cooking. No, I'm excited. I love a good challenge. All right, all right. Here we go. Me and the lady last night out to dinner at one of the beautiful establishments on Hudson Street, and it's outdoor, and it's dusk, and the sun is setting. We got a nice table. I see a bunch of... Teens, youths, maybe 17, 18, Afro-Americane children uh, on bikes, as you will. They're all on bikes. Little little childhood trauma there. But uh, they're circling a fat white guy with a beard. Older guy, probably like 45, 50 years old. Salacuse? <laughs> no, he was a taller, bigger, full of hair. Guy looked like he was put together. Okay. And he's on the sidewalk. They're on the street directly next to him, like shouting stuff to him. And he's like, nope, nope, nope. And this is like a, this is a, a block back. So I'm not, I don't have a great shot here, but I'm like, something's going on right here. Oh and the guy is on the phone. So he's calling a, po- a popo or an, uh, an investigator or something. And they're going, come on, man. Come on, man. Like saying, like, stop calling the police. Stop calling the police. Finally, they get off the sidewalk. Now they're in the middle of the street. And they're just all around this one guy, and he's holding the phone up like that, like can't reach it. And one guy's going, I'll give you money, just give me my phone back. I'll give you money, just give my phone back. And he's going, nope, 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 nope. And I'm like, they're about, this is about to be a melee here. This is about to get ugly. They're going to wail on this guy because there's like nine of them, literally. And uh, he's going, come on, man, give my phone back. And they keep tapping him, so he has to keep turning because he's scared of getting, he's surrounded. So like they keep tapping his back. And he's going, up, 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 up. And then the cops show up. So one guy, the guy who kept saying, I'll give you money, give my phone back, he runs. And Weird. the other kids just jump on the bike and take off the other way. Because they were like, you're on your own, dickless. Well, we didn't do anything. You did something. And then he talks to the cop. And then everybody's like, what the fuck's going on? The restaurant is standing up. Everybody's facing him. Everybody's on board with this. It's like a show. And this older black guy, like a well-to-do ascot, you know, pocket square, uh, one of those black guys with perfectly white hair, you know. Just, oh, phew, I love those guys. Yeah, like distinguished, like a professorial dude. He runs over, and he, you know, he's one of these helper guys. He runs over and he starts talking to the cops. He starts talking to the old white guy, and they're they're figuring it out. 
and then he came back and ate and ordered dinner, and I wanted to go, what happened, you son of an onion? Talk to me, you, you Uncle Ben-looking mofo. Give it to me. So that was it. That's all we got. Boy, this is a real situation. I feel like Costanza. I want to get a shoebox and recreate it with Legos <laughs> and M&Ms and stuff. Yeah, I think the M&M <laughs> I mean, is you. I mean, uh, this is fascinating. Well, it seems to me maybe the only thing I can think is one of the kids had a phone. Maybe it's a burner phone because they seemed okay with abandoning the phone. Interesting. But interesting. They, they walked up and took a video yes. or a photo, and then he took the phone saying, uh-huh. hey, you can't video me. Yes. And then they were like, give it back. And he was like, no, I don't think so. I'm keeping it. Right, right. Because I had a couple of kids, a couple of whippersnappers one time take a photo of me outside of Starbucks here in a story. And I was like, hey, uh, you got to delete that. You can't just take photos of people. What are you, crazy? They were young. They were like 13. Uh-huh. And they were girls. And I, they ended up deleting the photo. Uh-huh. But I was like, which goes to recently deleted, so it wasn't even deleted. But I was like, you can't just walk up to people and take photos. Yes. So maybe it was something like that, or they shot a video and they kicked him from behind, something embarrassing, and he just ripped the phone from their hands. Yeah, which is a ballsy move. And I don't care who it is, white, black, gay, anal, there's nine of you and then one of you. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't. And these were teenagers. Yeah, yeah. They, you know, they, they didn't look menacing, but... I feel like if there's nine kids on bikes, it, it's always scary. Well, there's nothing scarier than teenagers to me. No, a group no of doubt teenagers. about it. One teenager is nice and whatever, but a group, right. forget it. Oh, yeah. And then they got the, the, uh, the hormones and the zits and the semen pumping through them. You know, they, they got things going on physically. Yeah, this is, uh, this is puzzling. It's puzzling. So I just make laps around the neighborhood now just to get out of the shoebox I live in. And the guy owns a restaurant on the corner, so I might go by tonight after having a couple of libations and just go, hey, man, just seeing if you're okay. I saw what happened and try to like get a, a, a tail out of him. Yeah, that's a good idea. Do it tonight because we got to record again uh, tomorrow, so that might be a nice to-be-continued. Ooh, yeah, I'll come back with the, uh, the answer. Yeah, join us next week yeah. <laughs> or whatever. But, yeah, that's the only thing I can think of because he had the phone. They felt they deserved that phone or had rights to that phone yes he kept saying i'll give you money just give me the phone i'll give you money which is such a weird thing to say the kids were saying that to the adult yeah it was it was one kid in particular i'll give you money give me the phone and then he's the one who went south and the other guys went north wait maybe they just wanted to use his phone they were that was their game or whatever it was like we need to make a phone call because i've had that before where people are like i my phone died or whatever and it feels scammy yeah, I so don't know. So maybe they were just trying to get the phone from him, and the phone did belong to him. And then they were gonna, he's not going to give his phone to a kid on a bike, because a bike, as you know, can pick up speed pretty fast. Sure, maybe, maybe. I, I think I like your first one. I think it was a Karen situation, he filming he something with that. Uh, but again, I don't know. I, I think you had, I think you had it close to the first one, but Hey, what, do, what the hell do I know? And then it's one of those things where I'm going to go talk to the guy and he's, he's going to go, Oh, I was, that was my ex-boyfriend. He brought all his friends. You know, you never know. Yeah. This is mysterious indeed. Yes. Yes. Very vexing, but I'll, uh, I'll try to crack the code. And I wanted to ask that older black gentleman so bad, just like, give it to me straight. Talk to me. Come on. What happened? But, you know, he's eating uh, tuna tartare over there. Yeah, you got to be careful these days. But uh, I don't know. Well, write in and call in if you have some uh, some thoughts. Yes. I'd like to hear some hypotheses. And the, the lady friend, she's been so hooked on the Citizen app that we kept checking it every 10 seconds. We're like, maybe it'll pop up. Maybe it'll pop up. And uh, never popped. Yeah, I figured it would. Because if he did call the police, maybe he didn't. He was just threatening to call the police. No, you said the police came. They showed. They showed. And they all chatted. And, and uh, it, it it ended. You know, it, they walked away from it. And nobody got a ticket or anything. So Interesting. Very interesting. And quite a show. Like, just seeing that, you know, 20 feet away was uh, pretty exhilarating. Yeah, that's exciting. It's an exciting time in the city because it feels normal-ish Ish. right now. You know, you see the the restaurants, everything's a buzz. It's beautiful. It's nice weather. But I'm in a similar spot where it's like you're still just walking. There's not really a lot of activities other than walking and maybe sitting outside to eat. 
Right, right. Yeah, true. Uh, I mean, my street is is turning to Bourbon Street. It's I got like eight bars on my street, and by five o'clock, there's a, a quite a me, a million a milling milling going on, mm-hmm. and everybody's got a cocktail in hand and a flip flop on, and by nine, it's you know it's Cancun out there. Yeah, same here. Thirtieth Avenue in Astoria is just rocking, just piles of people and. There's like scaffolding. You see drunk guys like doing pull-ups on the thing, and then the women are yelling and motorcycles. And are you noticing a ton of fireworks? I have not heard one, but I see on Twitter everybody's yapping about fireworks, and I see a lot of motorcycles. Oh, we got nothing but fireworks over here. Every night it sounds like a shooting. It's just boom, 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 boom right outside the window for like hours. Wow. And I guess, can you get fireworks on Amazon? What is the uptick in fireworks? I don't know. Maybe people thought Corona was about to end, and then it didn't. So they're like, fuck it. We're shooting this uh, Roman candle. I guess so. But, uh, yeah, it's fireworks central over here. But uh, Did you ever you know. get into that? Is it, sorry. Did you ever get into the firework game? No. never. I've never lit one firework ever in my entire what? life. Are you serious? No. I mean, like, people had them here because people in, in Massachusetts, they're illegal. Oh, so, okay. But everyone went to New Hampshire. My family, 4th of July, they, they've been doing their own. My brother-in-law and my, my father and my uncle do their own fireworks display. They spend thousands of dollars and shoot it off in the beach. But uh, I was always scared. I mean, that was a scary activity to me, lighting a fire and it sure. explodes. And you heard all the wives' tales of people blowing off fingers and all the shit. And, uh, yeah, I never did it. We had sparklers. <laughs> I mean, but I had the neighborhood, like my neighbors stuck the fire crack, an M80 into a frog's mouth and whatever, all that crazy shit. Yep, yep, yep. But I never personally was a firework guy. All right. I, I mean, I think the fear was the, the the thrill of it all. Like, we used to shoot those things. We'd go down to the levee and just shoot them at each other, and you'd have a hole in your shirt from where it hit you. I mean, it was, we were left to our own devices as, as youths and Looking back, I'm surprised I'm alive. I remember one time I got way too drunk and I kind of blacked out a little bit and I became the target somehow. You oh know, boy. like I'm on one side of the street and kind of in this empty lot and my friends are on the other side of the street just shooting things at me. And I'm talking, you know, putting a stick in the bottle and then pointing the bottle at me like this shit. And uh, I was so drunk, I was like, ah, nothing matters. Ah. And then one kid threw one. Big cherry bomb. Might have told this before. It lands at my feet, and I kind of do the, hey! Doesn't go off, and I go, hey! It must have been a dud. I go down to pick it up. Bah! Blows up my face, just like in the movies, and I just heard, <laughs> And my ears went out, and I go, well, I'm deaf. I look like Wile E. Coyote. My face is black. I, I was Jimmy Fallon. I got canceled. <laughs> and uh, my beak turned to the back like uh, Daffy Duck. And I, I just was like, well, I'm deaf. I have to deal with that. And about 10 minutes later, I could hear again. It was yeah. rough. I mean, we had those kids, but I was just not that guy. I was like, it was too... All the stories I took to heart, all the things you yes. tell a kid, I took as hard and fast rules. Like, people were like, "Don't the fireworks will get you killed. You'll blow your thumbs off. You, you'll shoot your tits off. And I went, all right. Yeah. Great. I, I won't do that. And oh, even yeah. like even drinking, I didn't till I was an adult. Really? Like I was like, sure, I'll stay away from that. I didn't drink till I was out of high school. What? And yeah, I started drinking October of two thousand. I was outside oh, of high school. God, I'm learning a lot about you. You got a book deal. You you drinking <laughs> later? I feel like you should be wearing a turtleneck and a pipe. No, I got, I got fired from that. Uh, the book the book is over. That's that's All over, right. Jerry. My dreams have been dashed. Well. But, we would have lost you if you if you wrote a book. You'd be on a different. You'd be on a different pod. I feel like. I know. I'm not a book guy. It's ridiculous. I don't know what I was thinking, but uh, <laughs> yeah, fireworks. I was like, okay, I'm not gonna do that. And same with like smoking cigarettes. I was like, yeah, all right, right, you got it. Like some things they hit you with so hard. This is the thing with drinking. They don't hit you with it. My family's all drinking. Right. Like to me, I'm like, all right, that's fun. That seems right. good. They're like, don't drink and drive. Yep. Oh, that, but even that I ignored also, obviously. But a lot of things I'm like, you got it. Smoking, cocaine, fireworks, all that stuff. I was like, all right, sure. You say no, I, I won't do that. Yeah, the fireworks were tough because they were just right there, you know. And Although I've never done cocaine, and that was right there also. The snorting got me. Yeah, anything in your nose is ridiculous. I can't put something in my nose. 
Yeah, yeah, same, same. But yeah, you're right. The drinking, it's like fine dining restaurants have beer. They have vodka. You know, it, it's so normal. Well, in that one, they can tell you whatever they want, but you can see them doing it. Right. You right. know what I mean? I mean, you're welcome to say, don't drink, but then everyone's drinking and having a great time. So you're like, nah, you're full of shit. Like, my parents never said, don't do fireworks, and then they were the ones sticking fireworks in a frog's mouth and shooting it. Sure. And having a great time. Yeah, but and the smoking, I never, I was with you as well. I never got into it. I tried it once. I said, this sucks, and all my friend's parents smoked. And it was it was a bummer to be in the car with them, and everything stunk, and they stunk, and they're blowing smoke on you. They had yellow teeth and all that. So I was like, "What's the point? What's the upside?" Yeah, exactly. I saw no upside other than it looked cool. But it does. You got to get this. It's a good look. Yeah, Nicholson looked great. Um, let me let me and, tell you a little bit about this camping trip. Can I switch oh, to camping, or is that all right? Please, I'm dying for it. I, I was all trying right. to fill the uh, the jizz. Oh, all right. You you started to say one other thing though. Oh, uh... Camp, nah. smoking. Smoking. Uh, oh, it looks cool when you're doing an activity with a cigarette hanging out of your mouth. I like that look. Oh, yeah, especially with the thing, with this yes. thing. Yeah, you got that going on. I mean, I've told the story a million times, but Kiefer Sutherland in the tux, no jacket, smoking butts while playing pool. I mean, it's still the horniest I've ever been in my life. Yeah, I don't blame you. I'm with you on that one. I mean, if someone was like, you could fuck Kiefer from that night... Or, you know, the entire cast to say by the Bell Blows You. I'd take uh, I'd take Doc, Doc, whatever his name is, Brown, Hollywood. What was his name? In, uh, uh, Young Guns. Doc Octopus, Dr. Brown. It was definitely Doc. Doc, Doc Sherwood or Doc. Oh, yeah, Doc something. Holiday. No, that's a different Doc. There was a lot of Docs her. back then. You notice there's way more Docs. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, back I worked the, on the Docs. <laughs> I mean... Michael Moore makes docs, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, he needs a doc. <laughs> a little oh, plump. Isn't it hard to take him serious when he's that grotesque? It's a problem, yeah. He looks like uh, somebody on Hoarders. And he and someone's going to teach him how to wear a hat. He's always got the <laughs> flat-billed hat, like someone sat on it. It's sticking over right. here. He's yes. got the testicle neck. Yeah. And he's like, here's what we got to do. And I'm like, shut up. He, well, and it's also interesting, the guy has like eight jillion dollars. Isn't that weird, too? Like you, you look like that. You're wearing sweatpants. You look like you, you invented Comic-Con, and yet you're a, you're a trillionaire. Yeah, I, it's just uh, it's, it's too much. I mean, I kind of like the guy in some ways. He's, he's likable to me. He's a, and he's a good filmmaker. Yeah, he's pretty good. I mean, he's a little preachy. Well, he's not always honest with the filmmaking. Oh, I don't like that. There's certain things where I'm like, well, that was a little tricky. Yeah. If you ask me. But that's a whole other topic. That's more of a queef topic, I feel like. Ooh, but well, sticking, save it. Sticking to his looks. It's just goofy. And I've never seen anyone wear a hat worse. No, no. It's a bad hat. Bad look. Bad bod. It's some bad hat, Harry. Anyway, bad so diet. we went camping. And so Friday, I think it was last Friday... I'm on a group text with Bobby and Ari, and it just says Camping Monday. And I have, we've talked about this a lot. My immediate instinct for any idea that was not my own is to be like, no way, <laughs> Monday? It's two days away. You got to give me some time. Like, what? Right. I'm not going camping in three days. That's ridiculous. It's dumb Ari trying to do his thing where he's like, let's go to Tibet on Wednesday. Right. right. You know, <laughs> I'm like, why not just plan it and. So my immediate instinct is like, absolutely not. I'm not going camping in two days. And then I kind of walked around and had that thought of like, well, why not? I, th we're not doing anything. Yeah. There's yeah. no work. Usually you want to clear the schedule. You got a podcast. You got a whatever. I like to go to the gym or whatever bullshit. And I was like, I'm not doing anything Monday. Sure. So I messaged back and said, yeah, we're in. I'm down. Let's do it. Good for you. That's big little impromptu, and uh, I had a, one thing to tend to. I was like, I got to do this before, and that was a whole argument because Ari's like, we got to get up there early, which I'm an early guy, but some things early, you're like, we don't need to go camping early. Right, right. You, We're here you, all day. You leave at 8 a.m. We're going to get there at, at noon. You hike for three hours. Now it's three. The sun goes down at nine. That's six hours sitting at a campground. Yeah, that's and then a another lot. five hours in the thing. Yep. Sorry, somebody's doing work somewhere in my apartment. Uh huh. Can you hear that? Is it brutal? I don't hear a thing. All right, great. Well, Cans. anywho, 
So we go camping. It's me, Sarah, Bobby, Ari. Good group. And Bobby's got the antibodies, so he doesn't give a shit because he's the one you <laughs> kind of worry about a little bit. He doesn't give a fuck. He's like, come on up here. So then we got to figure it out. And Ari's a little, he's a nervous Nelly because his parents yeah. are 106 and he's 58. And Yeah, he was in the Holocaust. Yeah, all, all the people, we talked about this last week, or maybe it was on the Queef we talked about this, all the people that are like, oh, you're so anxious, you're so nervous, you got to be a free spirit. Then the shit goes down, and there's a deadly virus. He's like, ah, I'm not going to get in an Uber. I can tell you that. Maybe I'll right. walk to your house. I'm like, it's a nine-hour walk. You just take an Uber, you fucking idiot. Exactly. But I digress. So finally we convince him to, he rents the car in Manhattan. He goes and gets the car, comes over, scoops us up. We're all in the car. We're having a great time, a lot of laughs. We got the big backpacks. We go up to Bobby's house, meet up with him, and Bobby's got four of everything. He's got extra this. He's got extra that. He's got, you know, uh, sausages, and he's got cigars and Tits. beverages, all yeah. kinds of shit. Oh, yeah. We pack it all up. We say goodbye to Max. We take off. We go up to Wagawoo Falls. I have no idea what it's called. <laughs> Good beef. Perfect day. 80 degrees, we got the huge packs on, and we hike up this mountain. It's like an hour and a half, two-hour hike. We get to this big waterfall. We set up camp, and we're the cool ones. Don't you love when you're cooler than everybody else? Oh, it's the best. Because this is just, no one's ever, no one's hiking up. Because this is like, this is bushcrafting. We're like hiking, not at a KOA, but like, not at a campground, but like in the woods. We just find a spot in the woods wow. to go camp. Good for and, you. As we're hiking up, we got the big bags, the big camping ones that come up this high, like we're oh, in yeah. Vietnam, and there's all these people walking by, no bags, they got jeans on, they're like, are you guys staying the night? We're like, that's right, you fucking douche. Yeah, suck on that. And they're like, whoa, excuse us, oh, sorry. They're wearing flip-flops and heels. Right. So we go all the way up there, <laughs> we pack up, we pick our spots, and it feels so manly to set up a tent. Yes, and we all got knives. I forgot my knife, but I had an axe, and that Ooh, was exciting. And body we're chopping spray? down trees. No, not anymore. I guess all people right. don't like that. No, it kind of went out. Yeah, whatever. But we set up the. And I'm the fire guy. I like to be the fire guy. Ari's the go get the the logs guy because he likes to run through poison ivy and chop shit down. <laughs> sure. And then I get the fire all set up, the TP, because I got Native American blood in me, as you know. <laughs> that I made up, but. The rest is true. So I get the fire going. And Bobby, he brings the food. He sets up the food. Sarah does nothing. It's a great time. <laughs> we got the, uh, the fire cooking. And it's just beautiful. So now the fire's on. We go, let's go check out the waterfall. And we yes. go over there. Don't go chasing them. We didn't chase it. We just went over there to the waterfall. And it's like a perfect flat rock moisture pool. It's like a natural pool, Jerry. Uh -huh. Dead pool. We get in there, and Above it's like 55-degree water, icy cold. We just hiked. We set up our tents. It's hot as fuck. We slip right in there, go straight into the water. It's the most refreshing swim of my entire life. Come on. Uh, yeah, just beautifully refreshing. We're all in the pool. Bobby's got his shirt on. We have a great time. We're swimming <laughs> around. We're splashing on each other. And yes. it's just high spirits. You couldn't, they couldn't have higher spirits. I saw the photos. You ripped. Oh, th well, that was a lucky. That was a lucky break there. I think the sun hit it just right, and wow. uh, I was freezing and a little I, hungry. I wanted to hit it. It was hot, and our oh. speedo was on fire. Yeah, his balls are huge, and uh, just yeah. a great, great time. Sorry for the noises. Sarah's cooking up some lunch here, so there's a lot of beeps and sweeps. Oh, okay. I heard a kettle or something. Uh, yeah, there's some aluminum foil and some business. We're almost done. What is that, Jiffy Pop? Uh, I don't know what's on the griddle for today, but uh, right. I'm going to get a burrito right after this. But Ooh Oh, my God. we got to wrap up here. But anyways, we did the whole thing. It was a great swim, great time. And uh, earlier, whenever I time I hike, I always throw out a rule. Whoever falls first, and falling is constituted by both hands on the ground, okay. they got to buy lunch the next day. Ooh, I like it. Is it Bobby must have bought a, a couple of meals. Well. A restaurant. I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, right. but you're not wrong. Oh, he probably bought a, a full Whataburger chain. Well, we, we hike up there. We do the hike. Everyone's on their feet. No one falls down, but we're swimming. We're literally getting out of the water after a perfect swim. You just hear a little, a little slick swoop, a splash, 
and so everyone just goes free lunch baby and you know bobby's got water and if he had that one moment of like no wait a minute ah fuck all right ah. fine you got me <laughs> yeah he's covered in mud that was great and then uh we sat around the campfire all night no music no screens no phones just sat there and really took in the piece and just trashed every comic we've ever met which was really fun and nice. uh, we sat under the stars and didn't sleep at all because we're on the ground and it's cold and there's monsters and we're telling ghost stories. Of course. But just a great, great time. And then the next day we all summarized it. I think it's on YouTube. Bushcraft oh. Party Boys and One Girl. Check it out on YouTube. It's on Ari's YouTube page. Oh, wow. Um, so you can go check it out and get all the stories and stuff. And uh, Boy, there wasn't really a lot of laughs in there as I, as I realized. But, no, uh, I could see the whole thing in my head. I'm picturing Bobby on the floor, you know, kicking his arms like a dead cockroach and Ari's balls and, yeah, the, the, the fire, the camp. I love it. I should have sprinkled in some jokes, but it was very refreshing, very relaxing, great car ride, great hike, great swim, and just a, a good, nice time. And it, it's those moments you forget that COVID even exists. Yes, that's the key. Because we're all sitting around, you know, it's just we're, we're they're sitting, there's no distancing, there's no people, there's no mass. You're just sitting under the stars and having some good laughs, and it feels like real life for a few minutes. So, yes, it was it, glorious, and uh, yeah, glad to be good home. Good for you. Good for you for going. Good for you for doing it up. Good for you for turning the screen off. That's the key. It's you get the real life and the no screen, so you're getting double double uh, good vibes. Yeah, that's the best. And uh, taking Twitter off the phone was a was a nice move. And uh, so I, I I want to apologize, people, that for not favoring all the tweets. I'm sure there's some nice tweets in there. I appreciate them. You can email me or Instagram me because Instagram's a much kinder, gentler world than Twitter. I agree. Why is that? It's is it because it just photos? I don't know, but I mean, there's some shit on Instagram, but people just it's not a mean place. Twitter is mean, 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 and just hateful i heard uh ari was telling us kurt metzger had a, an interesting thing he prefers facebook over twitter because on twitter the response is an equal size as your tweet mm. so you tweet in a cube and then the response looks the same as your thing uh -huh. whereas facebook your post is this thing and the comment is a little bloop down the bottom Ah, interesting so he's just a ball hog I guess, I mean, he's also a complete crazy person, but... Yeah, funny guy, uh, but he's a bit of a nut. Oh, uh, the funny, one of the funniest people ever. Oh, yeah, great comic. But anywho, we ended on uh, very little laughs. I apologize, but uh, I hate no, myself. The really message is, take a breather and go camping. Go camp, delete Twitter, fuck your dad, eat your mother out, spit in her face. Jizz in a kumquat and, uh, <laughs> yeah... Tell your mom I said hi, and uh, yeah, kill yourself, and praise Allah. Ah, it was a bad dismount. I'll be better next week. Next week will be better. Sorry, no. I blew it. Good dis, good mount. Uh, it's a bad dismount. I fucked up. I blew mount, it. Mount Chocula. But yeah. I got all excited about camping, and I realized I didn't have anything. Oh, uh, you're fine. That's that's good, man. Camping's crazy. I mean, those photos. Go to Joe's Instagram. See the photos. Uh, check out the Patreon. Follow us on everything, even though we're not checking stuff, and uh, watch my <laughs> special, and hopefully yours is, uh, hits the airwaves before we all die. Yeah, I have no idea when it comes out. I think it's all fake. We're living in an alternate <laughs> reality. Well, but, you gotta, uh, you're getting a good buzz about it. Yeah, I appreciate it. All right, we got to go. Join the Patreon. There's a ton of queefs, ton of live episodes, oh. the video early. Big shout out to the guy who made the shirts, those cool shirts with like a character guy on it they're like white and blue have you seen the, those the motorcycle one though that one's amazing too the motorcycle one's great but this one is like I, he sent me some i should go grab them but they're uh they're fucking adorable but where are they Who, who's people are showing pictures i'm like i don't even know do we <laughs> are we getting paid for those i doubt it uh this guy made them himself they're really cool. Oh, I forget his name. Sean King, or is that a, that's a black guy? Are these sanctioned? I mean, there's just bootleg shirts out here. I wouldn't mind get, if our likeness is on it. I mean, I feel like we should get a couple of bucks or a sandwich or an Antoine's cookie. Our title is on it. Yeah, send us a cookie at least. And but he sent me some shirts. I'll give you one if you want it. They're larges. I know our best merch is on the African American market. I don't. I don't know what's <laughs> going on here. 
<laughs> well, they're they're doing really well uh, in Chinatown right now, so who knows? All right. Well, I'm confused. Sorry for the the weird ending. That was my fault. I hate myself. I'm gonna kill oh. myself at some point. You're good. You, you didn't die camping. Bobby's buying you IHOP. Everything's good. All right. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. Hit the Patreon and uh, yeah, take be be careful Wait, out there. Did you get the lunch? Oh yeah, we went to lunch the next day. We went to a diner and uh, it was beautiful. I had oh. a nice chicken parm and uh, they're my open. Throat, my throat still hurts. Yeah, outdoor seating. Oh right, 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 right. Yeah, it was great. Great lunch and uh, Bobby. Uh, you know, he's made good on his bets. Of course, he's a good guy. Yeah, we had a great time. All right. Good stuff. I'll miss you, and I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Great. Queef. Bye. George is saying cut it. Where are the cameras? <laughs> <laughs>